Almost exact contemporaries, Jean-Antoine Houdon and Claude Michel, called Claudion, were steeped in the study of the classical past in Paris and in Rome. Claudion made a specialty of small-scale statuettes and reliefs inspired by the antique, as in this early relief of the selling of cupids, which is based on an engraving after a wall painting that had recently been discovered in Herculaneum. And he later repeated the composition with subtle changes in marble. Houdon, too, could work on a small scale in marble, as in this delicately modeled relief of a dead thrush, in which he represents the bird life-size and succeeds in conveying the textures of its limp, soft, feathered body and open wing, defying the hardness of the stone itself. This terracotta sculpture of the Three Graces may well be a model for a fountain, the three female figures, each wearing a classical gown, or chiton, with their arms lowered and their fingers interlaced, stand around a central pedestal. The composition reflects Clodion's familiarity with both classical and Renaissance prototypes. As was often the case with Clodion, he reused the composition of three supporting female figures, in this instance for the base of a superb clock by Jean-Baptiste Lepotre. Here, the figures dance and whirl as though they were turning the annular dial of the clock. A masterpiece dating from the eve of the French Revolution, Clodion's terracotta clock base is conceived and executed as a finished work on a small scale. Clodion's subjects are taken mostly from the pagan world of Ovid, often representing allegorical or mythological scenes. One of Henry Clay Frick's acquisitions was this beautifully modeled late terracotta of Zephyrus and Flora, where we see the winged god of the west wind crowning his bride Flora with a wreath of roses as they embrace, while small putti floating on a cloud are gently pushing the couple together. During Udon's time as a student in Rome, he concentrated on studying antique sculpture and anatomy, this small terracotta figure of a vestal who is holding an offering bowl in her raised hands was inspired by an antique marble in the Capitoline Museum in Rome. However, she is not static. We are aware of the body beneath the robe as her left knee is slightly bent and her head turns to her left, evoking slow, deliberate movement. Among his greatest works was this life-size mythological figure of Diana, goddess of the moon and the hunt. Udon's departure from most antique and later models is in her graphic nudity, for she was usually shown wearing a tunic. The technical feat of balancing the figure on one leg is an impressive one for the sculptor. It is Udon's portraits for which he is best known, and it is to him that we owe the most powerful and lifelike images of the men and women of the Enlightenment in Europe and America. Here, you see the portrait of the beautiful young Comtesse de Kela. The sculptor depicts her as a bacchante. Across her breast falls a branch of grape leaves, alluding to Bacchus, the god of wine and revelry. The artist makes use of the gray inclusions in the white marble to give the impression that she is running through dappled sunlight. Udon's bust of Madame Is portrays a refined woman of 42 who was married to a banker and was a personal friend of the sculptor and his wife. It is in the rendering of the sitter's features and expression that Udon excels. Her eyes, carved with a cavity for the iris and a small rod of marble attached to the lid to catch the light, sparkle with a reserved intelligence. Udon brings the same skills to his half-length bust of the Marquis de Miromenil. Commissioned to immortalize the Marquis' appointment as Garde des Sceaux, or Attorney General of France, by King Louis XVI. The textures of his robes of office are superbly rendered, and yet it is the face and the character of the man that prevail. Both his pride, even smugness, and his wily intelligence are conveyed through the carriage of the head and the sidelong glance of the eyes. The exhibition in the Portico Gallery offers us the opportunity to appreciate these exquisite sculptures in natural daylight. We welcome you to visit Enlightenment and Beauty, sculptures by Houdon and Clodion through April 5, 2015. Support for the presentation is generously provided by Margot and Jerry Bogert and Mrs. Henry Clay Frick II. For more information, please visit our website, frick.org. <laughs>